tabs are up and um, quivering at, and in anticipation of me closing them one by one like some kind of disgusting cyber snuff flick. Excellent. That's, that's, a, that's a great beginning. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to People's Exhibit. This is uh, a show where we talk about stuff that happened uh, last week. And... Um, <laughs> It's become more mushy, the definition, as yeah. weeks have gone on and we're like, oh, that's kind of funny, let's yeah. put that in. No, it's just, it's, it's, it is, because we don't really have, like, uh, we, we we initially wanted to be about video games and it didn't work out. Um, well, they're trash. They're, they're trash, a there was a mis they were a mistake. Memes <laughs> were a mistake, video games were a mistake, anime was a mistake, merch was a mistake. Um, it's, it's really all just been a huge mistake. Humans developing self-awareness was a huge, huge step back in... Is there a game yet called Error? <laughs> Error. I think we should make that. <laughs> just Error. Was, is the goal to destroy everything? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the dev whatever thing is coming There's out. There's 20 so. different endings. They're all... Everything ends. It's just slightly different. Yeah, they're all bad endings. There's no good ending. But we can be yeah, like, yeah. give them false hope. They'd be like, oh, there could be an achievement for a good ending, but it doesn't and exist. Every, at the end of each one, they, it says, this was the worst of all possible <laughs> endings. <laughs> you failed in every possible way. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no which, credits. Which brings us to XCOM 2. <laughs> um, not go. that they failed in any way, but there's been uh, more drip from the, uh, the media IV. Um, or suppository, whatever it's called. Um, and so there's been more bigger videos come out, and uh, they're interesting. They're interesting to look at. Uh, it seems like to me, I, I know that you haven't watched them that much, um, but I, I know I, what I've noticed is was that um, it's shinier, um, more more rain, uh, yeah. Generally, uh, it's kind of wet. And um, it's kind of all the same. It's like a variations of what kind of used to be in the game already. So um, there's yeah. still the patrols of the aliens that you meet. Um, they kind of come with this. But these guys like stroll around as opposed to the previous two where they were like, huh, hark, there's humans. Um, but <laughs> this time around, it's more like, ah, na, 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 So could there around. potentially be an element of like stealth gameplay? Oh, it is, definitely. Stealth? No, no, they, that's like the, the main thing they're, they're, they're been like pitching for the entire time. So they have the concealment cool. mechanic, they call it, uh, which is you start every almost every mission, unless it's like purposefully not like that, uh, yeah. in concealment. Uh, and until they spot you, or uh, sometimes you run out of time, it depends on what kind of mission it is, yeah. um, you can repos you can position yourself whatever way you want, and then you take one shot at them, unless you got spotted, and they'll they'll be like, and they'll be like, oh god, we are being under uh, attacked, we're reacting, and as they're reacting, everyone else, you, you probably, if you're not an idiot, put on Overwatch, so yeah. you ambush them. Cool. And then they're like the fighting stars kind of thing. So and they're usually over leveled for the fight, but you have the advantage of the stealth. So it's sort of emphasizing that. Um, yeah. Asymmetric. Gorilla, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you are, you are infiltrating, getting in there. They're like. They're I like already... that a lot. That sounds really cool. Yeah, that's, that sounds pretty cool. Um, the, I think the the one new thing that was that was that's obviously new that didn't exist before. But yeah. the whole patrol and reinforcement stuff that's already kind of been in Enemy Within, where they keep dropping on you and keep dropping on you. And I was okay. recently talking to Perna where he was doing this uh, mission that is in um, only in uh, Enemy Within, where like you discover Exalt, and as you discover yeah. them, you need to extract one of them to question this guy. And as you're extracting him, like people keep dropping and dropping. It's kind of like Arma sessions that when the enemies when reinforcements, the reinforcements never stuff. stop yeah like in the last yeah. last session um <laughs> I, need, I, I need to adjust um so it's kind of like that but i i think the whole like roof destructibility is is what fascinated me the most is something i lacked so much in the previous game and like they like so you can be sitting on a roof like oh i'm a sniper no 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 but then they could like blow up that corner and you fall through and you also take fall damage uh, which is like something that was in the original xcom so it's not exactly new but it's great that it's yeah. actually um, in the game, and then there's it was a bit wonky in original XCOM as well. It was pretty slightly weird. It was wonky. Yeah, yeah. It, did you actually take fall damage, or did you just fall? I think you just uh, you just floated down. You flo It looked like you floated down, but I thought it was possible to take fall damage. I remember that if you were if you to you were to miss a um, uh, a staircase, and then you would go one level down, you didn't take damage. But maybe it was more. No easy. stuff like that. No, but if it's like off the side of a building, actually, I don't even know. Hmm. I don't remember. Maybe someone remembers. 
in the in okay. the chat. The, the two guys who said boom and say maybe you remember. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's that was fun. And they have the loot system now, which they also showed, which is simple. Um, yeah. It's in a what sense of it? like it's an expiring loot, and you have to like some enemies, especially the the really hard to kill ones, will drop stuff, and you have to go there in like two or three turns. Oh, so kind of like meld. Kind of like meld. So they they they're trying really hard to make it less of a like. Go halfway, Overwatch. Go halfway, Overwatch. Go halfway, yeah. Overwatch. And more That's like, good. fuck, shit's on fire. Ah, and there's a fire. This burns now. You can take burn oh, damage. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's that's kind of that's kind of neat. Yeah. Obviously, they haven't re revealed all the like late tech stuff. I assume they haven't because mm. um, that would be a bit like you know giving away too much. And marketing uh, drip doesn't do that. Mm. Um, yeah, they, I guess the curve of stuff we've been shown is. Pretty good. I'm kind of fine with it. I'm still, I'm sort of, I don't know. I'm not as uh, sort of grabbing it half the press and, and watching absolutely everything with, as I am with certain other games, I guess. But um, I'm hopeful for it. Uh, yeah. And it, and it doesn't look like it's going to be horribly disappointing. It looks like the ending, well, the big question, one big question is multiplayer, yep. which we uh, have heard nothing about. So not that's really. kind of a bit worrying. And it's still mentioned is, in the pre-order. That's good. Yeah. The other is the uh, camera thing. You mentioned that it seems to be oh, yeah. still somewhat glitchy. Yeah, they had they had the they had a terrible bug. In, I almost forgot to mention that they had a terrible bug in that version, which they're aware of. Well, obviously, die. There's like every video <laughs> has it. Yeah, <laughs> your preview video has that bug in it. All of them. Uh... Um, where if you uh, scroll down through the levels, it doesn't go through. It just goes like you know, it's either all invisible, like you you're looking at the trying to look at the ceiling, but it's not there. Or it's the other way around, where you you have to look through a window to see what's inside the house because it won't show you. Um, doesn't sound like a terribly hard thing to fix, so hopefully they'll get around to doing that. Um, even even make it so there's some kind of manual override would be fine. Like, pro mode, like, fuck this. I know when I want to look at the roof and I know when yeah. I don't. Levels, one, two, three, just put it on the number keys. That, that would be, yeah, great. But that's, I think that goes uh, against the overall AAA current design thing where people are like, well, we can't give them too many options. They'll get confused. We'll uh, just put a little, do what every single other software developer does, and put in the top corner a little gear icon. And the little gear icon means, stay out, mum. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah. that's It should say that when you hover over it as a tooltip. <laughs> <laughs> Not for yes, you, mum. Save your photos there, mum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, save means store. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, yeah, that's... The, <laughs> That's, that's Minimize good. means the little bar. <laughs> no, that's the X. No, you've closed it. Yes, you have to start again. <laughs> oh, it was Iron Man mode, Mom. Um, <laughs> so yeah, they they released that. That's that's been happening. Um, they also, I think today they were playing. Uh, Jake and Garth was were playing um, the same like big old mission that they gave to everyone, but you know their own take on it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I'm assuming in January we'll have a couple more drips going on, and um, I like they what they did last time was they had a multiplayer thing about a week or two before the release, so they'll probably have some okay. kind of event where they just give it to. Um, uh, Tall Biscuit still plays video games, right? So I give it to Tall Biscuit and Angry Joe or someone, and they'll, they'll be like, right. Oh, look, I'm clicking stuff, and the people will be like, yeah. wow, amazing I'm tactics. very famous. I've been given handed this game by my producer. Disclosure: It's been it. given. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, exactly. I got this game for free, not as a bribe, but because it is a requirement of reviewing the game. Uh, please Top hat don't balancing. hurt me. <laughs> uh, crowdfunding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got news for about crowdfunding. Several stuff, things, things happen. Um, there's Star Citizen in there, but we're not going to start with it because we want to just... We want to tease you. We want to tease you, yeah. We just stand by for Star Citizen. Before that, drones. There's a lot of drones today. Uh, drones. So, you know, when the, when in the 80s they thought the future is going to be all about, like, synth robot shit. It, was, it wasn't true. It's actually about drones and selfies. Um, yeah. Futures is it is it is dystopian. They were right about that, but it's not like some Terminator T eight hundred one hundred thousand whatever. It's actually just selfie taking drones that annoy you so much that you kill yourself. Um, so there was a campaign. I didn't even know this that failed. I didn't know that either. Uh, which uh, no, it didn't. It succeed. Well, it succeeded, in but it failed in delivering. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so they 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 got three point five million uh, dollars. I think it was in a, a European 
that was the equivalent so it's about like yeah. what, two two mil in in pounds yeah. or whatever and um they were gonna make a drone uh that does helps you selfie yourself to death uh literally it flies around you and takes pictures and video and then you go like hey. <laughs> progressive uh, levels of damage because yeah. it's also firing uh like pellets of molten lead at you <laughs> until you, you die from one of four ways of dying. It's like a micro that. oven that is flying around your head. Um, <laughs> and they were like, and uh, the funny thing is, so they didn't manage to deliver on this. They completely yes. failed apparently. But yeah. as I was viewing the article about this, on the side of it, there was an ad about a drone that does this that you can buy. Well, obviously, whatever uh, malware you have in there, it's like, oh, he's reading about drones and selfies. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and this always goes back to my um, my uh, point about this kind of technology being horrible. Uh, uh, because uh, the, the, the classic thing, and this really did happen to me, was this like uh, long kind of heartfelt breakup email that I received basically one time. And then on the side of it, it was just all ads for like singles stuff. And yeah, like, it works, right? I was like, fuck you, technology. Match.com. It was a proper Black Mirror episode, let me tell you. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so um, there's the, the part about this that uh, is of note, I suppose, because uh, campaign failing isn't really news. No. Uh, although people running away with the money arguably is, is that Kickstarter themselves are hiring an investigator, this dude called Mark Harris, who... Uh, does investigative journalism, lives out in Seattle, a, a British guy, I think, and they're paying him to figure it out, figure out what's going on, um, write talk a story. to people, write a story, and uh, in some way help. To, it's not like legal proceedings no. thing, it's more just... Emotional. Emotional, yeah. A little bit of closure for the people yeah. who've together lost two million pounds. The article is going to be called Gestalt Equals Closed uh, when <laughs> it's done. At least that's what I would name it. <laughs> <laughs> there i did it yeah um yeah it's quite a lot of money to go um you know quote unquote missing um yeah. so uh, which takes us to star citizen <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can just imagine the star citizen guys looking down from the tower at, at these tiny drones they see twinkling on the uh, walkways beneath them and going ah chumps that's nothing <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so they recently passed 100 million dollars of funding through the through you the the, the, the crowd um yeah. and they also passed 1 million crowds who funded People? them through crowds yeah yep. and yep. uh what, what, so i have some video for this there we go and they released as to celebrate this they released uh alpha point to whatever something some a new version of the game yeah, um, Alpha 2.0. Yeah, that is apparently um, working for the first time. It actually does stuff. Um, like, you can play it. I I think I can play it as well. I never just bothered because it downloads is like 10 gigs or whatever, and I just don't care. Even I, though I, I thought it would be more than that, to be honest. I'm surprised. Uh, 20 10. gigs. So I, you know, you name the price. It's all the same. I still play, paid like $45 for it, and I, I just... I would... Can I get a refund, by the way? Is that... Just get a shit suit and then pretend... Oh, actually, no, you, you already can have about as much claim to having released good space games as Derek Smart. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then be like, I've released space games, let me yeah. tell you. Link yeah. to the... To the um, this trailer that we're running. Yeah, or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then say, and I know, having managed the finances of a game studio yeah. for quite some time now, many months... Um, that, uh, well, this is bullshit, this game's never going to happen, and, and to the point that, you know, they'll be like, alright, bad press, and give you your $45 back, and yeah. you'll be uh, happy as Larry. Hopefully, I, I, I can use that money to pre-order XCOM 2, <laughs> which is roughly yeah, $45. Yeah, they tell you there's no multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll ask a refund there, yeah. and I will, uh, um, I, I don't know, buy, I, I eat a lot of ice cream. Ice cream's never <laughs> A whole bucket bad. of ice cream. Yeah, and, and be sad. Um, so they 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 released this thing as people like crawling around and walking around and shooting stuff mostly in first person for whatever reason because apparently we don't have enough of that and yeah. um, uh, today not today or yesterday I think um, elite a game that used to be called elite colon dangerous terrible name if it was coming out this week it'd be on our list yes. uh, of shit titles um, has been as as kind of re released as a different game you have to buy again. What? Yeah, 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 it's not really on the doc docket, so I can I might as well mention it in in the context of uh, yeah, yeah. Star Citizen. 
Um, so there's a new game called Elite Dangerous without a colon between Elite and Dangerous. And after Dangerous, there's a colon Horizons. Um, it costs almost as much as the game that is still available for sale called Elite colon Dangerous. Um, and this one is kind of the same, contains new new ships and planetary landings, which people are super excited about. Um, to land on a rock, lifeless rocks, because none of these planets have anything on them. I, you know, I, I promise. They're um, all procedurally generated yeah, because it's rocks. impossible to not. So just yeah. rocks. So rocks. Um, and uh, if you pay thirty pounds for that, um, then you can land on rocks, get a couple of new ships, and just be, you know, I guess satisfied with the emptiness of your wallet uh, as a result of that. So, so why the reason I'm mentioning is so they also released after the point two alpha uh, whatever version. They're like, oh, we got the same thing as the Elite does, even though they didn't mention Elite, obviously. But they were like, look, we can land on plants as well. And they also land on a uh, procedurally generated rock. Um, and everyone's also super excited about that. So yeah, they're, they're, I um, saw one where they took off from a procedurally generated rock. Yeah, I think maybe he watched it in reverse. No, oh, right. it goes like from eyeball to space. Oh, yeah, know? yeah. There's also one where it goes the other way around. They, they made oh, okay. two videos. I, never saw, so, I only yeah. saw one of them. Though. Yeah, they're exactly the same, really. Um, right. They both completely ignore atmosphere or its existence, and they just go like, "I landed!" Whoa! Well, That's great. Is there even a spaceship in the one I saw? It was just a camera pulling out into space, so I don't know. Oh yeah, the other one is in a spaceship, um, oh. and he also kind of does. It, it just just burns through the atmosphere with no resistance. No, but there's there's nothing Perhaps. even. There's not. Yeah, there's no absolutely no resistance felt. It doesn't even shake. <laughs> like right. there's there's no turbulence. In the atmosphere, he just uses the same speed he has in the orbit without any any air resistance at all in the atmosphere. With anyway, you you understand? So my, my problem yeah. Here. Also, I have another problem, but this is again with the elite stuff. Is that now that they're both called Elite Dangerous, the only difference is the presence of a colon and not colon. So not colon, not colon, called, and Horizons. Yeah, it's going to be called like colon or Horizons, and you know, eventually the names Elite and Dangerous will fall away. And it will just be left as what's distinct about them. Horizons. So, so colon horizons. horizons. Yeah, colon horizons is a new is is my new band. <laughs> colon. <laughs> the colon event. Look horizons. up my colon. Look at uh, the horizons. So the thing, last thing I want to say on on Elite is I've realised why uh, the FPS module annoys me so much. That's not Elite. That's so, Star Citizen. Sorry, yeah, Star Citizen. Yeah. Sorry, they, they're. The same in my head because I don't yeah, have either of them, yeah, and they both, both look empty. like huge waste of money. They're empty, yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yes, the star thing about Star Citizen that annoys me the most, uh, and it's FPS module. It took me a while, but I figured it out. It's that they're using solid projectile guns in a future where they have FTL. I feel like men running around shooting each other is the thing that happens when literally everything has broken yeah. and they and they'd be joking to the, each other going we really are in the stone age now when they're firing these solid projectiles which shoot them backwards with momentum in yeah. the vacuum of space extremely dangerous it should be drones with lasers that are targeted by ai Absolutely. it just makes no fucking sense yeah exactly um I, what, I think what uh, sort of annoys me most about Star Citizen is not even that it's late or it, it has like millions of dollars going uh, to, you know, Mark, is it Mark Hamill? Yeah. Yeah, Mark Hamill's, you know, back pocket or whatever. But it's just that it actually turns out to be a casual game. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a filthy, filthy casual. Because people who like, like are excited about this, they have no idea about simulation. It's not a, it's not a space simulation game at all. It's just, yeah, it's Dean a, Hall's doing that. <laughs> Well, <laughs> he claims. Um, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> this is the thing that all all sim people build something very janky, but kind of realistic and really dull, but interesting in that way that we like, like armor. Yeah, and and flashy shit like this and Star Wars and and whatnot. That's for different people. Yeah, the filthy casuals, as you know, some other people refer to them. <clears throat> um, so I, I I think I think this I'm sure there's going to be more news on this in the next uh, thing. So we might as well just uh, kind of pause here. You know, actually we have more stuff about this, but in in a bit. Is this the next one? It is. Uh, but soon we're coming back to Star Citizen uh, uh, it, with the um, the Cliff Harris thing because he returns to the subject by saying that we should, <laughs> we should crack oh, yeah. down on this shit. 
And he's like, <laughs> there's a picture of him shaking hands with uh, Derek Smart. Um, <laughs> um, internet hands. and, and uh, children can no longer be friends, potentially. Um, yeah. If the, 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 the was it, what's the name? Fat cats in Europe um, <laughs> passed, passed the law. Uh, which will raise the li the limit, which was it's 13 years. They have to be 13 to like open a Facebook account or I, I believe Twitter. Steam is the same, etc. Most most online services where you can open an account, except yeah. for like Pornhub, um, you yeah. have to be 13. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they were last. Apparently, they're passing some laws uh, around this subject, and and there was a last minute decision to go like, yeah, let's raise it to 16. They haven't actually voted on it yet, but if it yeah. does. Yeah, if it does happen, everywhere in EU, um, and they would have two years to implement this, you'd have to be 16. And if you're not 16, you'd have to ask your parents for for permission, whatever that means. I actually tried to find out what they meant by permission, and yeah. it wasn't stated anywhere. Well, um, usually with the 13-year-old things, there's uh, you have to have something written and signed by your parents and mailed in physically to the company that runs the service. Well, yeah, that would... Last that, time I checked. Yeah, 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 that would make some kind of sense. If it's just like, do you have the permission of your parent? Yes. Yeah, a picture of like some kind of sexy dominatrix saying, "Are you eighteen? Would you like to enter?" <laughs> and you're like, "Okay," but it's that. It's the same exact dominatrix, but it's just like, "Do you want to use Twitter?" Yeah. <laughs> exactly, and there apparently was some concern from anti-bullying organizations that this would lead children to lie about their age, which is something that they're doing anyway. Yes, um, I've been lying about my age since I became the age that I didn't have to lie about it anymore. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe you know this is a concern. I I'm not sure this legislation particularly going to change much. It kind of annoys me in the same way that like the only real things that annoy me about Europe are kind of the thing where they limit the volume on European audio devices. <laughs> That's the only thing that really has annoyed me, like, but it annoys me a lot, like, you know, it's the kind of thing that, like, you do one or two more things like this, and I'll, I'll switch to UKIP, like, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I'm fine with everybody from all backgrounds, if I can't listen to music at, like, an audible level, I'll happily ship them out. There's also the thing where the cars, like, they can't be, like, as powerful as American cars. Oh, I don't care about that. Oh, okay, cool, never mind. <laughs> Whatever, cars are for fucking losers. I live in London. Aww. If you have a car, you're a fucking idiot. Here, anyway. Right. So you can you can never. When I have a car again, you can never ride with me. <laughs> no, you're I, done. I call, no, I call shotgun. Oh, right, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be insulting. You'll be walking to insomnia. Time. I'll be working the I'll be working the tape deck. <laughs> I hope the next car you get has a tape deck. Cool. Yeah, I was thinking about a motorcycle, but yeah, fine. I'll get. I make. I get a motorcycle with tape deck. There are like really big are ones. Motorcycles are infinitely cool. They can never not be cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> with the sidecar. Side with the like a thing. Yeah, like a Nazi. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, get getting like an SMG from World War Two and just sitting there with a dorky helmet. Just yeah. one thing flapping around. You could even get a helmet with a, like a little like a World War One spike that the the Germans had <laughs> for fucking no reason. Yeah. It's like you're gonna headbutt your enemy what in a trench. <laughs> <laughs> this this, this is great. This reminds me of that like the the video I was editing today for the <laughs> winter scenario. There's a bit where Odo goes like you know, uh, hold uh, hold your hands with the, your partner when you're crossing the road with, like you know. <laughs> Alluding to like what they tell children in the first grade or whatever, and, and then he goes like, "I never understood why you have to hold someone's hands because if they're getting run over, then you'll get run over." <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. Yeah. So it takes us to um, Cliff Harris, who doesn't like to capitalize his last name because he doesn't reread the text he writes. So um, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. If you go to his about page right now on his website, it says Cliff Harris with a lowercase h. About Cliff. Click here, dot, dot, dot. He yeah. also doesn't really understand no, web, he doesn't. web design particularly well. Cl Cliff Harris is a 23-year-old <laughs> game designer and programmer from the UK. This is quite clunkily written. Oh, and in the second line, there's, uh, um, there's um, parentheses with yes, really, which, by the way, requires a comma between those two words to be grammatically correct, and also is uh, advised by um, the style book uh, of... Uh, what's his name? Strunken. What's it? White. Um, 
that's it uh, yeah. to not do in this kind of formal oh, writing. absolutely i have that as well yeah yeah so there you have it um but cliff is is as a is a medium famous um uh, is he is he british <laughs> yeah he's british british yeah. game developer um who's made probably most famously uh democracy 3 uh oh potentially even made democracy 2 and 1 but i've never heard about them um huh. so maybe he didn't um but democracy 3 is a decent kind of democracy simulation game uh and um he's often quite outspoken about things uh in this case he's outspoken about the government not getting involved with addiction to video games and um he also says that uh, this is a, it's essentially a blog entry that you can get for the link from the description of this video where he goes on about uh, how he's really anti-regulation kind of dude um, and he doesn't like tax cuts for game developers because fuck them. Um, but uh, he would really want people to from the government to get involved in stopping um, self-harm through addiction to video games, especially those that demand either too much attention or too much money uh, that mm. you pay through... Um, the in-game transactions. So, is the idea that everyone should pay like uh, stratospheric prices for healthcare, but the government should uh, tell you which Kickstarters you're allowed to back? No, which game, which games you are are allowed to exist? I think without being modded in some way that they are not like too addictive. Is I, this a, I got. Uh, is this a, a libertarian who wants to end and censor and ban video games? I, it seems like a libertarian who finally realized that the the, the fact that his parents never established boundaries um, <laughs> is was actually bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It, it, it's very contradictory article. Uh, again, yes. I, I like Democracy Three. I think it was great. Uh, gra uh, gratuitous space battles. The first one I played, the second one was fun. So he's made oh, wait, some. This is the gratuitous space battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's oh, made some why stuff. Why is he such a fucking idiot? <laughs> he's like a good developer. So he's made some stuff that I purely like pers personally enjoy, and I think is great as video games. But so yeah, he does. And also, he's invested so much. He's he's been on so so many times on my Twitter feed as like a promoted tweet about his games and all this stuff. And I, it, it was funny that Mikhail just now in the chat, he was like, "Yeah, his game was pretty addicting." <laughs> addictive, sorry. I was I said addicting because I've got to get used to that. Um, I, I, I read it recently somewhere where it says addicting and that's why. Um, so it's funny that then kind of ironic that he is also, again, while stating that um, regulation is bad, he wants regulation in this specific instance. I, I think it's okay to have like, I mean, obviously nuance is good. You, you, you can have like views that uh, on the surface appear conflicting. But there's no, it doesn't seem to me in this article really that there's much explaining why he holds both of those views and how they reconcile. But, yeah. I don't know. Um, and it's funny that in the same week as that, we, we got the gondola news that appeared. Um, <laughs> oh. So, uh, this, this video, obviously muted here, but I definitely recommend watching it with the sound on. Uh, gondola is a startup right it's already good so when the, i actually don't know what's the like what's the what's the protocol on the startup becoming a company and not being a startup anymore was that it's like two years three years <laughs> failing what is what is when does it like what is the precondition for just not being a startup but just being like oh i made a company anyway <laughs> a startup called gondola that has a service called gondola which is a algorithm called gondola um mm. where, which uh, essentially adjusts um, in free-to-play games the prices for the shit you don't need um, according to your habits or who you are. Yeah. Um, something that is potentially illegal in some countries, including USA, uh, because so, like, depending on... I'd be again, surprised if it didn't, like, piss off, like, EU as well. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Because it's essentially, it's not... Obviously, the prices can change throughout whatever, like... And they quote, I think, in, even in this article uh, where we found about this is like the airplane prices, whatever, air, airplane ticket prices changes, blah, blah. But this yeah. specifically looks at your footprint in the game and potentially outside of it and then determines this guy doesn't spend much. I'm going to drop prices for him. This mm -hmm. guy is, is spending a lot. Let's raise the prices he's actually eager to buy anyway. So, and uh, apparently they tested this with, uh, you know, the game Cut the Rope. It was, I think it used to come with um, that really good internet browser called Bing. 
a browser that uh, the search engine bing and like you would go to a bing and then at some point it was like cut the rope essentially you have to swing a thing on a rope you cut it with the mouse movement and then it falls into a frog's mouth or something it's some kind of browser game or whatever it was you know i think okay and so they there's a, apparently a sequel to it obviously and so they tested with that and they got 11 percent better uh conversion for the idiots who played it um as opposed to without gondola and yeah. so the, this is the proof that gondola is, is great and i can't wait for its ceo to be handcuffed and taken yeah. to court by fbi so this is just a system the thing well one of the one of the many kind of angles you could argue about this is this system comes in is kind of you can just plug it in apparently you can flip it on and off as demonstrated by the fact that they did and tested it yeah. on people yeah. and it, it provides nothing extra because you'd have to make extra parts of the game for you to provide something extra to the user base but just ends up through manipulation price costing manipulation. them more price manipulation costing yeah. them more and also or less. the other the other thing is that selling something for two different prices depending on who you are is kind of disgusting this is discrimination essentially yeah it's not very different from like you know two guys coming to a shop one's white one's black and you go like oh you're a black guy sorry it's twice as much also this uh system like the very first thing i would do if i was uh kind of like all right fuck them and i'm kind of tech guy is break the algorithm yeah absolutely I'd be like if there's a trading system in this you're fucked because yeah. <laughs> people will figure out how to have cheap this and that and trade yeah there probably exactly. isn't a trading system in it but um, people will be swapping tips on this. People will be manipulating and, and hacking this. It will probably be kind of hard to maintain and all for just bad will. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just gross. Also, with the airplanes thing, they already kind of do a similar thing because prices change a lot dynamically, whatever. But I, I did hear about one thing where if you uh, are not in private, uh, in like, yeah, private mode, basically. I always can... buy airplane tickets on private mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fucking yeah. should because if you look at a ticket and then yeah. you come back and look at it it's again, more. And it's more, and it's even more, and it's even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They're like, oh, he didn't find any others. Yeah. he's come to get this one. Well, guess That's why I keep saying we're we're ready for orbital bombardment. I mean, there's nothing. What else can we do for like, fucking do it already? Put uh, put us out of our misery. I hope that all that fucking um, all that Star Citizen money is actually for a space station full of nukes that they can. Oh. Just... So are they gonna even pretend it's for making Mars habitable? You know they were gonna nuke the poles. Remember e Elon Musk was like, "Oh, I I love how Elon Musk is like, fuck AI, <laughs> this is gonna eliminate us. Let's nuke Mars." <laughs> okay then. I think he's been playing too much XCOM original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, that's that's fair. That's fine. Yeah, I I don't like when I see the words Elon Musk, I stop reading. Yeah. Unless he's bored, Elon Musk. I kind of like that sometimes. It's it's kind of on a it's hit and miss, but you know there's still some good stuff sometimes. <laughs> Which takes us to other CEOs and whatever you know guys who are <laughs> up, up high in the in the thing. Like this yeah. one. His name is Peter. And Peter I Moore. forgot his. Oh, Peter Moore. Okay, very good. So um, he his DNA is full of esports, uh, according to uh, Electronic Arts. Which now, nowadays people call EA. I, I remember back in the day when it used to say Electronic Arts on it, like you know, you know, when the game would start and say Electronic Arts. It doesn't do that. It just says EA now. Well, you know, in Newspeak, how they took out a lot of words to yeah. stop people thinking about the meaning of the words. Yeah. Do you think that maybe they took out the word arts so that they wouldn't be on the hook for the fact that all they make is sports games and Battlefield? That's that makes sense. Yeah. Even though <laughs> in, back in the day they would just used to make like basketball games anyway. Yeah, well, they also don't want you to remember that yeah. because that was your one chance to point this out. Yeah, <laughs> you blew it. But uh, what... so yeah, EA are kind of shit. Esports are good. Hopefully, it's good. Yeah, maybe. Well, he doesn't know. It. So anyway, this guy is head of esports for EA now, and what yeah. he doesn't know though, Peter, what's up? How's it going? That there's a guy because there's a football player behind him who's gonna <laughs> fucking ram him. And he's right there. He's right. He's right behind him, and he he doesn't know. He can tell he doesn't know because he's smiling. Like if he know there was who a, would smile? Yeah, who would fucking smile? Three hundred pound man was about to. Yeah, look at that. He's got this guy's huge. He probably eats like three Peters for breakfast. Yeah, with different <laughs> surnames, with different varying degrees yeah. of esports in their DNA. Ex exactly. Yeah, but no. But in Peter's DNA, it goes pretty deep, according to the article, and they're. 
it's all about competition or some shit. I think that this is mostly about like make them playing FIFA as yeah. some something. I don't I don't care. Let's go to the next one. EA stands for European activities. <laughs> <laughs> Kojima um is is back on the news uh, and this is a good enough um reason for me to use that hand picture again. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, his holiday is officially over. Somehow he managed to end it. Um, and he doesn't actually doesn't work for Konami anymore. And now he works yeah. for Sony. Yeah, um, in the space of a day. Yeah. Single so, day. so, he just like walked out of one office from his holiday and then walked into back, back into the different one. Like on, and he's working now. It's not a holiday anymore. Um, which is apparently yeah. um, exciting for uh, Jeff Keighley because they're friends. Uh, yeah, though you wouldn't think it to look at his face because Jeff Keighley's face is the face of a man who's about to die who give his last will and testament to his loved ones and pass on <laughs> what constantly <laughs> he just looks tired and fucked off like he's been pumped full of drugs that will kill him but hopefully the thing that's killing him slightly faster and we'll see if he gets <laughs> to the finish line first or second well I mean Kojima's face looks like he does, it just can't be like bothered by anything. You know at what Kojima's face looks like? It looks like he's been working on the Metal Gear series for thirty years. Oh, that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, his new company, <clears throat> unlike his previous company that used to be called Kojima Productions, is called Kojima Productions. Um, Will they be hiring the same people? I wonder. I think they have some of them. Yeah. Um, because they, he was on his Twitter, he was showing off some people wearing his new t-shirt uh which you can buy by the way um they haven't made anything yet that we don't even know what they're gonna make but the merch is on sale um so we can, we can get some new kojima merch um buy this kojima cart before you buy this kojima horse yeah exactly yeah and put it in front of the kojima horse <laughs> kojima usually just rides a motorcycle though it's, he's kind of like that greek pri not prime minister financial minister um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they both wear like leather coat jackets, and they both like ride motorcycles. Uh, except that guy is always with a girl, and Kojima's usually alone. But yeah, whatever. I mean, but Kojima's a nerd, so you can't really talk to women. Um, going back to the merch, yeah, you can you can get the merch. They're gonna make a game eventually, maybe 2017. Judging by you know, like take 2015, add three years, 2018 probably. It gets yeah. delayed in 2018, and if Sony and Kojima still exist by that point. We've got a new game. They have a new logo. It used to be a lightning fox or a fox with lightning <laughs> legs. And now it's a skeleton within a helmet or something. That looks like a chicken. That looks like a chicken. There you go. So, uh, what are the odds uh, it's going to be a chicken. Kickstarter? That there is Pretty there high, first, I'd say. Right? It's Sony loves fucking Kickstarters. Remember the... They, they go nuts for it. Yeah, Shenmue? What was, yeah, Shenmue 3? Yeah. yeah. Where's, where's that game? Where is it? Why is it not out yet? I don't understand. <laughs> 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 right um, <laughs> sure yeah what if Shenmue 3 is actually Frog Factions 2 ah yeah. there we go there we go what an excellent <laughs> link so uh, brief introduction of Frog Factions if uh, you are unaware although many of you will you should be should play it I haven't you should play it it's good I, I think I believe it's free online browser uh, game web yeah. browser game so there's no um, financial reason that you shouldn't. Yeah, it's uh, very unless... postmodern. Yes, it, it kind of defines postmodern. It's a game. Of, it's a game that's definitely about games uh, in the same way that like Stanley Parable is, and the same way that I've heard Undertale is kind of, and things like that. Um, so it starts off. The premise is, uh, and oh, from the title, it's like this is an educational game to help teach you fractions through the medium of like a kind of frog breakout clone ish, but not really. <laughs> Uh, and and you're like cool and it's really cutesy and it looks really kitsch and stupid and you you have the frog tongue that like hits fractions and at first you're like okay well this doesn't really I'm not really doing any maths but I mean maybe this is just to get me used to the controls or whatever and you carry on and you you're picking these fractions out of the air and then levels will finish and you'll see a bunch of power ups and unlocks that you have to get or you can get. And uh, the first one's kind of logical, you're a bit faster, or your tongue's longer or stronger, or something, you have a track power. Kind of very video gamey stuff. There's also and homing. And this goes on. Yeah, homing... Uh, tongue. Homing tongue, yes. Yeah, my new like sex name. <laughs> my new sex move. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> ah, baby, I'm gonna give you the old homing tongue. Oh, you know how I like the homing tongue. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where was I going with this? Uh, You're going to explain what, fractions. Yeah. Uh, so um, tell how it, it changes. Uh, as it goes on, it becomes clear that it's not about learning fractions. But then, beyond that, it becomes clear that it's not just a video game disguised as a fractions teaching education tool. It's a video game disguised as a video game disguised as a video game. Eventually the fruit that's been falling and the flies that have been attacking you um, kind of fall away as you dip under the surface of the pond, which is a nice metaphor as well. And you, you find a, like, a, 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 like a bajillion fruits which enables you to unlock go to space. At which point the game entirely changes to a shmup. And that's kind of as far as I went when I played it. I was like, oh, I get this, and I've heard about this, because I got to it quite a bit after it was released. But essentially, it goes through several different stages. It, you become like a, a insect pimp at some point, Yeah, I it think. goes through the genres. So it goes yeah. from shmup to, um, I think, like election simulation, yeah. music simulation. Then you are ele so you, then you do per, um, bug porn movies, and then you, be got, you be get in a bug court for doing bug porn. <laughs> Uh, and then you become the bug president um, yeah. through doing, uh, I think, something kind of like a Dance Dance Revolution type thing or something like that. And then uh, and then that's kind of where it, there's like fake credits as well, but then the game continues. Yeah, so, it's, this, so yeah. It's, it's completely bananas. And the whole point is to break all these conventions. And at every point that you've gone, oh, I get it. It's a joke about this. There's a new thing and joke to get. So anyway, uh, fast forward from then to uh, 2014. Um, a Kickstarter appears for Frog Fractions 2. And um, I don't know if it was before this uh, or after this or, or throughout the entire time, there's the kind of running joke of saying that this game, whatever, X game, is actually Frog Fractions 2. The idea that the trick is still being played and we're just looking for you know when the payoff is. Yeah. And so this Kickstarter happens, it succeeds, it wanted 60 grand, got 72, so I would have thought it got more, but maybe it became more of a thing more recently, I don't know. And meanwhile, throughout all of this, a kind of ARG has been happening. And there's an article that's pretty interesting on, on Polygon, I recommend you, you uh, have a look. Uh, it sort of details all these steps of what's been going on in this kind of ARG, uh, where all these little pieces of media and, and random what ARG things... is. Oh, ARG is... Um, is it augmented reality game or yeah. actual? Um, and essentially, what it is is when uh, it, it's usually like a scavenger hunt through the internet, through GPS coordinates in real life for like little tidbits and audio files with passwords encoded in them and things like this. Uh, Valve did one for the release of Portal Two, I believe. I think so, yeah. And that one was really tedious. Um, <laughs> but but there are there was good no bug ones. porn. There was no bug porn for one. Yeah. In, in, in this, one of the kind of bonuses, in this, uh, part of this thing is to, <laughs> a bunch of floppy disks with JPEGs of bug porn, uh, <laughs> including what you see now, uh, were kind of given to the people who figured out where to be and at what time. Wasn't at he arrested point, for it or something? Or he pretend, was arrested pretend arrested? By, he was arrested by time police. Yeah. And he, he <laughs> only had time to drop the sack of bug porn and <laughs> the next clue before he was driven away by people in Victorian clothing saying, don't interfere with the timeline <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty funny it's pretty interesting uh, the links in the description i recommend you read it and kind of catch up on it and play the game if you haven't it, it's kind of a nice story i really like this kind of shit um this kind of weird stuff going on it, it's i don't know it, it's something i can feel kind of unironically happy about with almost no reservation and there's very few things in the world and on the docket like that so um check it out yeah, exactly. It's it's sort of like art for art's sake, and yes. yeah, and it always feels nice that it doesn't. It's not trying to really sell you anything. They don't give a shit, and it's yeah. refreshing that oh. that happens. There's no Frog Fractions to merch, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Exactly. That's good. Which takes us to Gerbilism Awards. E um, there's Gerbilism Awards now. Um, apparently, there's a thing called the New York Video Game Critics Circle Jerk. Um, <laughs> And um, they, after existing for four or five years and giving uh, awards to video games, they were like, hey, hey, guys, hey guys, I have an idea. Um, and the idea was to give also awards to a gerbilist. Yeah. Um, so they made a list. Uh, they shortlisted about, I think, 
five or six people? There's like eight. Eight? Right? Okay, eight people. Um, and one of them is going to get the journalism award. It's not a financial award, it's just a trophy. Yeah. Um, and plus you it's can get... It's a laurel uh, gif that you can put in your about page next yeah. to your misspelled name. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, your own <laughs> misspelled name. Um, <laughs> it guarantees you to get a job at least somewhere. Um, and um, a surprising bit is that we are not on that list. Actually, it's not surprising. We're not journalists. <laughs> Um, yeah. we're just dickheads. So, um, uh, there's two people I recognize from that list. How many did you recognize, Ed? Uh, I didn't recognize anyone. The only reason I linked this is because it was, uh, announced to me through Twitter, at least, by, uh, Nick Capazzoli, yeah. uh, who's, who generally, Capazzoli. generally a fairly together guy who says sensible things about games that I like. Uh, so and he was very excited about this concept. So I thought, all right, let's let's have a look. And I kind of like the idea of having something to aspire to because God knows, like games journalism, it, not only is it kind of stepped on, a lot of it's not very good. And it, it would just be nice to have the same kind of bullshit uh, that everything else has. It's like the Oscars yeah. for games journalism. So maybe we'll get some of those Oscar bait articles, which are actually like good and interesting and different. Maybe for the cynical reason of getting a journalism award, but as a result, we get something we like. But um, I think this, yeah, I, I think that's a great point. Something I, I haven't thought of myself is is that now we can actually call things like, "Oh, this is just the video game critic circle award bait." <laughs> fuck, fuck this! I'm going to be using it personally in, the, in starting from the next uh, people's exhibit. So thank you very much, Ed. I, I will always that'll be a category. Whenever we find like some review of yeah. Guitar Hero Four. We'll be like, ah, this guy wants to get the uh, fucking Gonzo award. Yeah, we could, we could even announce, we can say that and then email them every time and then show you how we email them to recommend this as the, this year's uh, <laughs> New York Video Game Critic Circle Jerk Awards uh, candidate. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, overall, I'm like, that's fine. But uh, if I'm honest, having looked at this page, I'm not that interested. I don't really care, but it's not evil. No, it's just just not that interesting to me. Yeah, but it's there. It exists, and now we know. So our job is done, which takes we us. We did it. I can I can close this tab. <laughs> Finally, Ed. No longer <laughs> we hurt you. This tab is gone from your life. Um, the next one to close after you you've talked about this is the Undertale tab you have open. That's right. I've yeah, got go for it. Tab open. All right. So Game Facts uh, has uh, held a best game ever contest. Apparently, this is the third time they've done it. Uh, one time they did it in uh, 2009, and the winner, I believe, was Ocarina of Time. I don't know when the other time was, so it's just then and now. Uh, this time, uh, Undertale won it. Um, and uh, if you've been following this at all, um, it sort of was a lot of rounds of voting, like a kind of tournament system. And uh, to a lot of people's dismay, um, Undertale, a game that was released this year for PC, it was indie, kind of somewhat low budget, but... Uh, by all accounts, very charming. I haven't played it. I've got it, and it, I'm going to play it at some point, probably over Christmas, maybe. Um, On Christmas because, Day. Because, yeah, maybe. Because pretty much for the reason that people I like like it, and people I don't like don't like it. <gasps> um, and and I that and that divide is kind of unanimous, and like there's no outliers. So well, I told I, Biscuit like... doesn't like it. <laughs> Wait, I don't. Wait, wait, my brain's exploding. Who's, who's the what people are you trying to say about me and Total Biscuit? That you don't like him. Who's the people you don't like that like don't like this game? Um, anonymous internet commenters. Oh, good. Okay, cool. I got it. I thought he was more like <laughs> specific celebrities, like Donald Trump doesn't like it or something. I don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine Donald <laughs> Trump reacting to Undertale? Yeah, he'd be like, this is terrorism. <laughs> he'd shoot lightning out of his face. Yeah. Oh, by the way, on the subject of Donald Trump, um, please type in Donald Trump says China and watch that video. It's oh, fucking amazing. Yeah, good. It's really, it's, it's, it's a super it's cut. Like, it's, it's a super cut and it's a super cut. Right. <laughs> it's really good. So. Uh, you start like, obviously you get your semantic satiation to the point where you don't understand what the word China means anymore. And he says it like that a lot. Uh, it's really good. And it, it's not just China as well. It's like, I love China. People think I don't like China. I love China, China, China. So check that one out. <laughs> and I'll be playing Undertale at some point. In I China. imagine it'll be quite good in China. Um, but uh, the most fun part of all of this really was everyone, all the screenshots of people being really kind of butt mad about a game winning an award that's 
based on popularity, a game winning and popularity contest. They wanted so that's that. Ocarina of Time to win it. What's that? They wanted Ocarina of Time to win it. Again. Yeah. For some reason. Because they played it as a ch- child and that's valid. I played it as a child. It's I valid. Don't mind. Validity. <laughs> Ocarina of Time is like one of my favorite games. I don't. I don't care. I used to play Twisted Metal 2 when I was a child. Which takes us okay. to Facetune. It's a technology that exists now. So yeah. you've, you've all heard about autotune, which makes people who can't sing, can't sing. Um, <laughs> this one makes uh, either actors who can't act, can't act, or it makes directors <laughs> who can't direct, can't direct. But the difference is that they would have to pay money for it. Um, so this is, this is the technology developed by Disney. Yeah. You know, it's a big surprise, where, which essentially, it, imagine auto-tune for faces. That's, it's what it is. So yeah, they, pretty they, much. they record several emotions, a range of emotions, and then... Uh, yeah, several takes of the same kind of thing, but with... Same dialogue, same text. variation. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So imagine, so to simplify this, you'd be like, you say a sentence, angry, amused, um just neutral, uh, sad, scared, etc. The human range of whatever um, emotions. And then yeah. the, someone sitting in, at the editing table or whatever would be like, ah, I want him to start scared and go jolly and then end on a angry note. Yeah. Um, and with this technology, they can actually do that. And this is really the end of cinema. You know when they said that the end of cinema was the invention of the remote control and... Um, Peter Greenway said that, and that, wow, yeah. So at, at the time, I was like, nah, I don't know, man. You can't use a remote control in a cinema. Um, <laughs> but well, I'm not going to the cinema. I've got a remote control at home. I can shove it up my ass while I listen to Star Wars on mute. I used to have a universal remote control that I could use in any cafe. Did you ever have that? <laughs> you just change all the sports shit, or just, just turn like... off. Yeah, I just I used to turn off <laughs> to t- God Channel. Yeah, no, or just turn off the TVs in the like in in the in the windows of like you know like a the like shop that has a TV in in the in the, yeah exactly yeah it's pretty good. <laughs> um, you can buy like on Amazon for like five pounds and then they just go around London, central London, and turn off all the all the screens. Um, uh. So yeah, so the, the and this this is this is the thing. This is uh, where the you know acting ended. And yeah. autotune began, but Ed was excited about this. Um, well, I'm not thing sure is, why. Uh, because I, I see a lot of demos of this kind of technology. I mean, like capture of things. So obviously, I work in 3D, as you probably know, visual effects. And uh, seeing this at the state it's in, obviously, it's primitive for use in production, but it's quite impressive as a start. And I can kind of see where it's going it sort of reminds me of um so there's a um come back to this uh, guy a lot but a william gibson book where the kind of sent one of the, the characters that it's sort of a mystery and the characters are looking for this person who's responsible for these videos that are released into the wild where like kind of all the sources and the actors and the locations are kind of mysterious and no one can really understand where it's coming from, who's making it. And and it kind of ends up being the case that it's somebody in an edit suite uh, pulling all these elements from CCTV cameras around the world that they kind of have access to and is putting it all together in order to make this somewhat strange film in parts and release every now and then. And it kind of makes me think of where film could go potentially in terms of technology or a new genre of film like the film equivalent of vaporwave which which might or, or, yeah. or some something some kind of like a, a post-human approach to film where you go hello actor or hello even just stock material on the internet please look into this camera they flash a bunch of lights record like your uh, texture of your face the dimensions of your head you know the tension in your muscles. They say make these face shapes. Ah, uh, will be say this word, these words. You know um, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, and then they go thank you for your time. Here's your check, and then they all fuck off, and the production happens afterwards in, in this suite where all the information's been taken and all the sets are made digitally, and you're controlling the actor to this level of detail where um, people become irrelevant, and it's just some mad person storytelling with this. Um, with this with this technology that's so out there to the point that you can't connect with humans anymore and all the stories are really bizarre. I'm kind of looking forward to something like that. I think I'll probably be dead before we get to that point. But just the idea of a cyberpunk 
film. Yeah, cyberpunk art. Yeah, we, we, wouldn't then we need like some kind of, again, a different construct that would enjoy watching this as well? So we, we create a construct of art, which is sort of like what we used to do, but except that it's completely simulated. And yeah. then now we have we just have to simulate the audience and we can just leave them to it. Like well, we, the thing is, as in, the humans um, that we, we're like, you know, the the relics, we have we can just exit the stage. Well, I'm hoping that's the end goal of it. Uh, another thing in one of uh, Gibson's uh, stories, actually in a different series, but kind of along the same lines, I guess, is uh, there's a new medium of entertainment, which is it's like a, it's like feelies. So it's like watching a film, except it's a recording of all the sensory inputs of a person as and pretty much they'll just be in a nice location yeah. drinking nice wine having nice experiences and they record it through yeah. you know whatever input and then you can just pay-per-view these and have yeah. them just play into your body Brave New World has that that's even predates Gibson What world? Brave, oh, Brave New World, New world. Yeah, yeah they Do go they to have... Feelies they don't have movies they go to Feelies oh, maybe I'm thinking of maybe I'm thinking of that yeah, they go maybe to I'm thinking of that for the term but, but then Gibson has his own version of oh, it maybe yeah because that was like what in 60s? Oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brave New World's fucking ancient. Yeah, they go in there. And, they put... and got loads of future stuff wrong, but yeah, I yeah. guess those two things share that. Okay, so they, they, they put their, from that. They but... put their hands on, like, special whatever things, and they just feel everything that the actors are feeling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yes, uh, same concept there. That could be some something that would, would potentially work in that. Yeah. Um, I, I just, uh, I can imagine idiots um, putting themselves in the background of Star Wars, or in the yeah. foreground of Star Wars, and shit like that. Anyway, that Disney technology, interesting. Obviously, there's a long way to go for it to be useful, but from a technical standpoint, it's cool. But from a usability standpoint, it's one of those articles where people say, it'll be ready in 10 years. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then it's ready in 50. But yeah. <laughs> I, I think by the time... Like, this is, seems pretty pretty mature by the what they're showing. Like It, it actually it, it doesn't throw you off on that. If you don't know if the text isn't there that says reference, input, output, blah, blah... It actually yeah. looks like, you know, oh, it's some actor, whatever. Yeah. But um, I think by the at some point, again, if, if we do get to the, the, um, the neural sort of synapse interface kind of thing, then the, it's going to be the extension of, you know, blogging, quote, quote, unquote, where someone just records again themselves doing something and then you can just experience the same thing. And that's going to so, somewhat replace the super artificial made up human doing emotions on the screen when you can just like and it's, it's going to be like oh that's the you know triple a and then there's a youtube again quote unquote where you can just plug into some guy and experience what he's experiencing and then it'd be like oh yeah i really want to subscribe to the, his this this fucker because he's been <laughs> like mountain climbing on mars <laughs> oh, sorry i've got to go PewDiePie yesterday ate a bunch of like meatball <laughs> sandwiches with jalapenos and he's about to do a big shit. I want to be jacked in for that so I can feel <laughs> spicy asshole. Right? Um, <laughs> I, I think people will be like lining up to pay for that. <laughs> speaking YouTube of, Red presents speaking PewDiePie's of, spicy asshole. Speaking of spicy assholes, the, we, last time we mentioned the gun protest thing in Texas. Um, and yeah, there was a counter AKA protest. the saddest protest in america yeah, and, there, and there's a counter protest to that that happened uh, right after it which was the fart protest yeah so people came there i don't know if some of them probably farted but most of those fart <laughs> sounds um and they they were well, they were protesting people who were protesting uh, gun-free zones which is like a crazy concept that you have only some zones in a city that are gun-free and not all of them are gun-free <laughs> That is... <laughs> there should be gun zones with high walls, bulletproof yeah. walls. <laughs> that, they should be called firing ranges. That, that is so dystopian that you have non-country zones in a major city. In, in, and in that a... these non-country zones are protested by people with rifles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so they, 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 they went there and they, they farted a lot. There was a, there's a lady in back in... I don't know if you can see, probably can't see her, but... Like she's the one in the center. She has a giant dildo in, in, in her hand. And in the other hand, she has a paper that says, I am very sorry about your small penis issue. Yay! Okay. So, um, yeah, so that, that, that happened. Just to uh, kind of do a continuation of what we were talking about last time. At, at least no one got killed when the gun people did their thing, which is yeah. good. As a, as a news item that says, you idiots, we fought, it's very heartwarming. Yeah. So, well done, uh, you fought. 
people. I think even there's someone was holding a sign that says the society that is that farts is a peaceful society or something like that. <laughs> a society that farts together eats together. Yeah, it, <laughs> hopefully the other way around, but <laughs> lamps. Uh. Um, lamps. lamps are d also dystopian. Um, yes. So you may have heard about uh, LED lamps. Um, you can buy some of them that are five pounds and not made by Philips on Amazon <laughs> that uh, you can control with your phone. Isn't that <laughs> great? Um, I follow an account on Twitter called Internet of Shit. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, they usually tweet. They actually tweet about this uh, when this yeah. this broke. So Philips is making uh, continuing to produce uh, something called Philips Hue. Uh, which is essentially yeah. an LED lamp that you can change the color of and I guess the luminosity of these through your phone. It's still um, not going to get you laid, so fucking don't bother. I, I imagine the people are doing this for the darkroom to, uh, you know, develop film. Oh, I thought they were doing it so they could be like, let's make this a bit more romantic. And they get their phone out. Very like, white. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah. <laughs> The and then, like, change. oh, sorry, I, um, I just disconnect from the Wi-Fi. And then, and then the lights go, are you over 16? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he has to fax them a letter from their parents while the girl's kind of cooling down, and she's like, I'm not, yeah. I think I might go. Yeah. She, she's like, I, yeah, I think the hue of my vagina changed. Um, so they released a firmware that would lock you out um, from using, within their, I assume, sockets, other people's lamps they're proprietary sockets ah so, yeah, in, in very similar to our in um and I, apparently they actually rolled this back because there was a lot of rage um from their customers and they were like fine 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 um but um they're i i love it how when they limit you with you know with something they'll be like it's for your own benefit because they said this was to protect you from low quality products from the third party lamp producers um which is a major concern now in the protect place. you from buying yeah somebody else's stuff yeah we really want to protect you from not giving us money <laughs> the you... annoying thing about all this stuff is you you know people go well this is bullshit you hear about it you go this is bullshit and they roll back and you go yay a victory for us but probably for like every one of those things and it annoys you as well and you get all pissed off and waste time talking about it like we are now uh, for every mm. one of those, there's probably like 50 that nobody said anything about. Like, okay, Shkreli raised the price of Daraprim, it's awful. But there's a whole bunch of other drugs that have had this treatment, and it's never there's never going to be enough uh, headspace to, to, to control all of this with outrage. Um, libertarianism is flawed. I, I, again, orbital bombardment comes to mind. <laughs> just, just bomb us all, <laughs> yeah. please. Uh, I think the next one was pretty horrible as well, wasn't it? I don't know, it's uh, horrible. No, 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 yeah, it's pretty horrible. This, this one's more... funny, but kind of sad. Yeah, it's just sad. Um, so there's a there's a town in... Um, North Carolina. North Carolina. where uh, uh, Woodland were... is the name of it. Yeah, uh, somewhat telling name. Um, they were... <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to get solar panels in there, uh, yeah. up, in, up in there, um, <laughs> to, you know, get solar power and maybe be a bit more a bit greener um but the science and there was a public sort of uh, i think they called surgeries in england i i don't know what they're called in america they're probably called operations um where people come in and they have their say about the changes in the town mm. one of these people was um a uh, ex a science teacher lady um called mm. jane who was like fuck this solar pa you know what solar panels they absorb all the fucking solar energy and then there's nothing left over for the plants to do photosynthesis photosynthesis and then and, and you read this and you go like oh the children the the, the poor children that she's she's been teaching and then her, her husband chimed in whose name is bobby um and bobby was like yeah no it, it also causes cancer and she was like yeah, yeah yeah by the way thanks for reminding me bobby it does also <laughs> <clears throat> cause cancer um, uh, and she was like, "Can because no one, there's no one out there who can tell me that solar panels do not cause cancer. Hence, it causes cancer. And I have seen personally, said Jane, brown, dead plants around solar panels, which means that they've been killed by lack of sunlight because it was all sucked up. By were the these fucking... plants directly beneath the panels? <clears throat> <laughs> like... Directly, what does the that panels. does that change anything? I, I, I don't. 
Do you not you know see what? the evils of liberalism? So I read a tiny bit more about this. It was like some other article was like, yeah, um, this is all well and good. And there's a couple more facts to know. It's still just as depressing, pretty much. But uh, supposedly North Carolina as a state, while being somewhat backwards, is uh, the second largest adopter of solar energy behind uh, California. And it sounds like, from the other article as well, that um, some of the people at the meeting uh, were opposing the expansion, not because of these fucked up, stupid views, uh, which are you know, very sensational in how obviously wrong they are, but that um, the arrangement wouldn't have benefited the town financially. It would have just been pretty much, we're putting these here and you guys aren't going to feel any benefits from it, which is actually a legitimate concern, but um, it wasn't kind of written here. But, I mean, if I was writing this article, I know what I would have focused on. I would focus on this science teacher who thinks that solar panels suck up light <laughs> and cause cancer. What the fuck? How did you... How do you know this fuck? They said that in the area where there are solar panels, there's cancer. And hence, they were... Cancer was caused by... You mean um, like how the planet Earth has some solar panels and the planet Earth has some cancer? Is that that's exactly her point, by the way. Thanks for supporting Jane, uh, whatever her last name is. Man. Uh, man. 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 <laughs> the <laughs> the most dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, this one's all you. Yeah. So, uh, this is this is pretty good. I wish all of you could read Russian at this point. Um, <laughs> in I think it was in Irkutsk. Um, some... Oh, I know that from Risk. They're very good. So, some, some guy um, who used to be married at that point... Um, uh, he he was he was looking up some localization forum website stuff about Fallout 4 just before its release, and um, people were quite positive and they were excited about it. And he was like, "Okay, this looks like a fun game. I could try this." So when it came out, um, he bought it and he started playing it. Um, he so, he thought I'd play I would play this while my wife is on a holiday or some kind of no no it was not a holiday she was on a job like um. The thing, like when you go to LA, what is that called? You know, when you were oh, a different uh, town. Uh, a a um, <laughs> business trip. She was on a business trip or something, and so he was like, "Well, she's away. I'll just play this." Then she returned home, but he kept playing it, um, and she got upset with him and divorced him. Um, and so then, she obviously met somebody on the business trip. It seems like right. Um, <laughs> so then he and the, after she was like, "Okay, I'm filing for divorce." Um, he he played even more because he got depressed for because of that, and then. He played it so much that he, he was fired from his job um, because he would just stop going there. Um, and at first he was like, oh, I'm sick. But then they were like, we're sick of you is what we are. Uh, and they fired him. And now he's suing uh, the, not even Bethesda, which is I thought was first what's happening. But he's suing the localization company um, who, who made but just translated. Bringing it to Russian. Yeah, no, no, not just for bringing it to Russia, but for not stating clearly on their website that this game is addictive. Um, because he's been addicted to it and he has now um, some kind of digestive problems, uh, uh, blood pressure problems. He's taking drugs for blood pressure. Um, he's been um, going, seeing some psychologists and getting antidepressants. As a, is he uh, still playing the game? <clears throat> it actually doesn't say that, so I think he is. Um, and uh, he's suing uh, the localization company for uh, half a mil in, in rubles, which is about, I don't know, $10,000. Um, oh, right. Uh, and uh, just because he lost his wife and his work because of Fallout 4, because he didn't know, they didn't warn him how addictive it would be. Well, how much is how much of the $10,000 is his wife and how much of it is his job? That's a great question. And I think that's what the judge, uh, if I was presiding over this procession i'd be like okay well how much is for what well i mean maybe one day you will be able to when you uh, successfully russia, apply though. as a magistrate in not, the uk yeah not in russia though i can't well maybe we'll localize a russian game it'll be called, <laughs> it'll be the... called the invisible gaze or something i don't know yeah ex um, excellent yeah, yeah and then there's probably some like very addicted some guy would find very addicting in in Essex, and I would have to preside over that. Yeah, and you and, and actually it will be you who who was addicted to this game, and uh, you'll be saying, "Well, I didn't win that um, video game journalist award because I was <laughs> playing XCOM too much, and so I'd like to uh, sue Jake's truck." Right? Yeah, exactly. Of course. Can't wait to retire and become a magistrate. If, if it still exists at that point, because like I was telling you today, it could be just a, 
Just AI. AI, AI and I'll be just the AI hype man. And like, they'll just Whoa. be blending everyone's face. They're like, everyone in the court is too agitated, so I'm just going to blend a happier take on, and it'll be blinking strangely, <laughs> as you say. Uh, yeah, I uh, lost my wife and kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the AI is kind of pets me on the head and gives me dog food. Um, yeah. Which takes us to Shkreli, because that's what he's eating right now in the jail, is they just give him dog food now, because he's been arrested. I bet he's enjoying a foot long in jet. Uh, oh. that's, a, that's a reference. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh. Mar- Martin Shkreli, the guy who's been on every show since, like, the last two months, yeah. um, is, uh, is in, in the jail. <sighs> they, they put him in there, uh, because yeah. he's, as we probably all guessed, was a fraudster. We actually mentioned yeah. that he was being investigated for fraud uh, very, very first time we talked about this. Oh really? Yeah, we did because I, I, I when I started. I forgot like, about this. Yeah, I was like, "Who's this guy?" Blah blah, and he's been like his previous company failed completely because of him, and then they were like, "Okay, let's put this guy in jail," and they've been investigating him for like three years, and finally this is the result of that of him. Then be like, "Okay, we have enough shit on this guy now to put him in jail." Yeah. Um, uh, interestingly, uh, he when apparently I didn't know this. I found this today when he bought the the Wu Tang Clan. Um, album the only one uh that bill murray is currently as we speak is stealing from his apartment (laughs) he's heisting that (laughs) shit uh because the the this was a district attorney's name is uh is caper Um, robert capers u.s attorney robert capers (laughs) the amount of people who are judges and their last name is judge is fucking crazy (laughs) um (laughs) So what you know, as as not to distract Bill Murray, as as he's doing that, apparently, when, uh, next day he streamed himself talking about and like gloating how he has this thing and like upsetting a lot of Wu Tang Clan pe- fans, um, and that they're I think they just sort of piled in thinking that he would play it on stream. Um, he didn't. What he, he did. What? He, that's such an obvious troll move. Who would watch his streams? This they is did. the whole point. This Apparently is the purpose. Yeah, yeah. So he was like just talking about his life and how how cool he is, what a cool guy he is. And who's like who he was talking about like how he's gonna email some other artists to for them to make million dollar albums for him. Uh, but apparently that that million or two million dollar whatever album was bought by uh, money that he got illegally. Um, so that's interesting. Authorities are not aware of how Martin Shkreli raised funds to purchase Wu Tang Clan album project. This isn't like the main thrust of why he's been arrested, because, as you said, the investigation has been going on for a while, and it's about something else. Yeah, it's about something else. The problem with these kind of financial fraud stories, and this is intentional, is that they're kind of hard to follow. Um, it's a lot of paperwork, and them using this money for this, and using this law and changing it and doing this, that, and the other, and it's just not very digestible. As I say, that's the point of it, that's why we're in the, globally in the financial system, uh, situation we are, because it's all designed to not be very digestible and um, used by people like this. But it's nice when the little morsel comes out of it, like, I don't know where he got the money for this Wu-Tang out. <laughs> <laughs> so the FBI chief. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's nice to look at the picture where he's getting arrested. I think that's yeah, just, yeah. it's good. It just there's feels... some some good jokes about it. There's yeah. been jokes about the uh, Fed on the left being like super hot, the frowny pouty <laughs> man. <laughs> People are like, who's that guy? He <laughs> looks fucking fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're a uh, fine Fed, sir. So uh, I have a theory about yeah. this. I've been discussing it with my friend at work. Uh, basically, I think that. Well, there's a couple of levels to this theory. We'll start with maybe the uh, least uh, outrageous one, which is that what's happening now is happening to him. He is, you know, being done for fraud and stuff. But it's in order to do the caper that was in the contract. So yeah. right now he's being, you know, he's going go and having his bail hearing, whatever. And he did post bail for five million dollars, I believe. Um, and while that's going on, Bill Murray and Rizza and, and the others, they're in his house taking back the album yeah. and, uh, and, and and that's the whole point of the caper. But I think it goes further. Uh, it could go to another step where this is actually a work by Bill Murray uh, as a kind of um, live action ARG feel good Christmas movie where he not only does he steal the album from this guy, this motherfucker, but in the court hearing 
it is played to everybody as evidence. And in America, you can film um, uh, court cases. And so this would be broadcast to everyone, like the end of fucking Bill and Ted. And <laughs> everyone would be listening to this album, and he'll be there going, no, 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 like some kind of Scrooge. And uh, this will happen on Christmas Day or some shit, and it will be magical. And and it's all kind of payback for all this build-up of months of him being a scumbag. And that made me think of my most outrageous, but potentially most realistic uh, scenario where Martin Shkreli isn't a real person. And in fact, he is an actor, an actor who's created for this moment, this climax in the story. You never heard of him. And then he has some company called Turing Pharmaceuticals. It's kind of a joke name, right? And he buys this patent for a drug you never heard of until you either needed it or it came up in this news thing. And he is such a scumbag in all his interviews. Very well acted, I think. I think he potentially will have a wrestling career. And the idea is that he is actually <laughs> not a, a hedge fund manager. He's, he's not a business person of any kind. He is an actor. This is his big break. He gets to work with Bill Murray working on this live-action performance art piece about bringing a man low, and the kind of Grecian tragedy when we all get to laugh, but combined with the Western fantasy of Christmas. And once again, they'll play the album, this this Wu-Tang album in the courtroom to the uh, rejoicing of everyone all around the world and all wars will end. Excellent. Twitch plays Wu-Tang Wu -Tang album for $2 million <laughs> stream happening right now. It could be. Yeah, that it, it does. It does please me to imagine Bill Murray going through the like shit in in Ishkreli's house right now and being like, "What the fuck is this fucking, <laughs> fucking where is this fucking thing?" <laughs> He's on his little um, hoverboard, just yeah, yeah. moving from room to room yeah. with a baseball bat at like um, <laughs> at the level of all this pressure shit, knocking it over. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then steals a case of Lucasade and leaves without the album. <sighs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. We did that. We did that. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, what is this? You should take a breath now, because it's again your turn to talk about sarcasm. <laughs> oh, there's Bill Murray right there. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a. I think I saw this today, but just something I popped in. Um, a uh, funny study from Medical Daily, uh, which is about sarcasm. So um, what this study uh, claims is that uh, they tested um, a bunch of people. Um, it wasn't like determining their level of sarcasm exactly. It was more like putting them in first a scenario where they were either exposed to sarcasm, were sarcastic, or, or neither, whatever, and then had to do creative problem solving. And uh, what their findings were was that, uh, and I can describe the actual creative problem solving uh, thing that they each had to do, so that you have an idea of how you feel about the results of this. Um, uh, the uh, participants were given a candle, a box of nails, and <laughs> it's a bit weird, right? And they were told, uh, all right, so with just these, uh, can you fix the candle to the wall so that when you light it, it doesn't drip on the table? And so the solution um, that you would in theory come to is you empty the box of nails you nail the box of nails to the wall and then you put the candle inside once you'd light that it would just melt into the box no dripping on the table but I guess required a bit of creative thinking anyway the findings were that um, if um, there was just a conversation beforehand no sarcasm exchanged at all perhaps even words of encouragement um, people tended to solve the problem about 30% of the time, um, but if the participant uh, expressed sarcasm, uh, sort of sarcastic wit at any point in the kind of pre-interview, it uh, came up that they would succeed in completing this task 64% of the time, and even further, people who were exposed to sarcasm, not even who were being sarcastic themselves, so it was like presented to them as something they had to process and uh, perceive, uh, would succeed with a completion rate of 75%. So quite different values. Like yep. it seems quite significant. Uh, I couldn't see uh, from just a quick glance exactly how many participants there were, which is, I think would be very important to know. 300. In this... 300? Yeah. That's somewhat low. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's enough to, to get conclusions. It's but the like, minimum that usually they use for this kind of stuff, I think. For like uh, skincare, it's like 50, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Fifty um, monkeys, even not even humans. <laughs> yes, these, these uh, monkeys had complete total hair loss. Like, yeah. Well, I guess I did want to lose hair, but a, a monkey without hair seems somewhat unattractive. And they're like, no, no, don't worry. We used the uh, same monkeys to test uh, lipstick, so they had no hair and lipstick, so they just looked like um, your you. ideal human woman. <laughs> uh, they looked like your ID. <laughs> it looks like your ID yeah. right now. Very biometric. <laughs> so, uh, interesting. Have a look. There's a link. Um, I... It kind of pleases me. I'm kind of I, I kind of like the idea of these results. And there've been kind of studies before where, you know, creativity and humor and things like that have been linked to intelligence and whatnot. And you know, if you feel that you're a funny person as we do, then you can feel good about hearing that. Um, you know, reinforcement of that idea that you're a smirt, more smurder. Smurter. So there you have it. Excellent. Well, s smarter people create robots and and drones. So, in in our in our next bit, we are talking about Japanese drones who are catching other Japanese drones with a net. Yes. So ancient technology in the use of <laughs> current technology to limit current technology. You know what? Well, I can't wait for like the uh, <laughs> anime, which is like a bunch of uh, ladies in like cop uniforms, like looking really cute, and they're controlling drones and stopping all these criminals' drones. Yeah, I think that yeah, that, that's that's gonna happen. I think even even something even more ironic, I guess, would be if instead of the net, they were using uh, a fishing rod. <laughs> and what would what would be the bait for a uh, um... tits? Just drones that focus and hover around tits like flies on shit. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, or it could be like a slingshot, or or like a um, sort of a caveman axe or something. You know, like a drone that has like an arm that just goes like that, just goes boom, 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 like a whack a mole. But um, it yeah. with, a, with a big inflatable mallet. Yeah, like in a show where the, the robots fight and there's fire from the floor. What is it called? The Robot Wars. Yeah. 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 Because they have a lot of them have just have like dunk dunk dunk. I like have an accent. Yeah, 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 just very percussive. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they should be in a band. Um, <laughs> so yeah, apparently there was recently a case in I believe again in Tokyo where um, they found a drone that has some traces of radioactive stuff and he was hovering. Was it cesium? Or yeah, was it? I think it was cesium, and he was not very far away from their prime minister or something like that. And they were yeah, like, oh it god, it sounds terrorism. like a kind of bad and or failed plan or just coincidence and let's be fair like japan if you had to pick one country where you'd get cesium i think you'd pick japan they, they have a lot of yeah because it's, it's everywhere yeah. <laughs> you just scrape they, they it off the it ground all the fucking way out unfortunately yeah. um that said uh, you know obviously it well this is similar to that other news story it was that guy who was planning to use x-rays to um kill uh, muslims in america he had a a truck with that that was sort of beaming out X-rays. I I don't know. I didn't really read much about this, but that was kind of the headline idea of it. Uh, it's I a guess very it's, slow gun. I suppose so, but obviously you know the advantage of it not being detectable, and then you find out later that you've been killed by Russians or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's also very horrible. So it make I I think it was only a matter of time before you know legislation catches up and police forces catch up with this kind of thing, and that's kind of cool. It'd be nice if like sort of online stalking <laughs> had this kind of cool resources <laughs> put into the defense of but uh, i guess it makes less good gifs yeah exactly um i yeah no this is this is this is pretty good. even the walk all I, I think wouldn't be quite as if unless he has like lasers or something then they would whack like, a laser yeah just be like do 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 and there's the guy just drops out of the air and there's a different I... one there's like one that is holding a net but it's like horizontal and he just catches it dropping down so one, yeah, exactly, yeah. So you know, like <laughs> the two guys fishing. One is with the with the rod, and the other one is with the net. And then you have to, the rod one takes it out and they puts it in the net. You could have like a uh, homing or well aimed Nerf darts that aim to clip to fans to to the to the yeah to the blades and stop them, and then have some kind of controlled descent would be kind of cool. Or a Fulton system where it does that, and then uh, a, a capsule at the back expands a helium balloon, which is then easily captured by just some clip. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that that would be great. Yeah, or or something like where you develop um, like a, like a like a foam or inflating sort of cushion, like um, uh, with the like a Mars lander thing. 
you know when <laughs> yeah, it just pops yeah. around it and then it falls. Well, it doesn't have that. But it, like it develops there because you shoot it with it. And, <laughs> oh, like we like blow some kind of nano virus technology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> So, um, we, we apart from the shit title of the week, we have only one um, thing left, and this is the it's, it's the what the fuck of the week, which is, I don't even know how to pronounce this shop's name. It's is it Robert Robert Dias? Dias. Dias? Robert Dias is a shop. It sells bits. Yeah, it's kind of one of those kind of in betweeny, departmenty, hardwarey, uh, high street get what you need, but a little bit more kind of shops. You're a bit surprised that it's still open and didn't close down after the yeah. you know internet appeared kind of shops. Um, and um, they uh, apparently want to keep going, uh, so they made the Christmas ad, uh, which is uh, oh, this is a wrong ad, a completely wrong ad. Let me just—it's um, going to gonna start at this one, but I'm going to quickly change it. One sec. Uh, I didn't attach the correct one, so one sec. Some other video. Yep, completely different video. Ta da! Oh, the, the, the face one. <laughs> Let's go to the correct video. Um. In the in this ad, they talk about uh, there we go. We are Robert Dias. There you go. There it is. There. So um, in this video, they talk about how they're either straight, gay, or bisexual, and yet they still work or shop at Robert Robert Dias. Um, yeah. That's the entire concept. That's literally the entire concept of the of the video. It's not like sinister in any way. It's if anything, no. it's naive. Um, yeah. It's it's someone imagine someone sort of being like oh hello my name is John they shake your hand and they go like and I'm straight or I'm gay and they're like good I yeah yes the thing is my experience of it is slightly different to yours because I have the context of what I th uh, when I initially saw it, I had the context of what I think is the direct inspiration for it which is what I've just linked in chat and uh, if we remember we'll put it in the mm. uh, links or you can look for it you pretty much just search Red House commercial so Red House is um, um, some kind of it could even be real or fictitious I don't know but it's an American like furniture shop or rather my experience of it is a commercial about an American furniture shop where it goes welcome to the red house uh, and then they talk about their furniture and they say things like this sofa is perfect for a black person or a white person <laughs> and the whole the whole thrust of the joke, uh, and I, I quite enjoy it, it's quite a funny commercial is that it's completely strange and incongruent to even bring this up and it's kind of like, and they sound like people who've just been on a course, a sensitivity course, and it's just kind of funny and 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 goofy and They're stupid. Like, and, this and, is and important. Irrelevant. I need to be okay with gay people. <laughs> oh god, yeah. I'm trying so hard. The problem is the Robert Dias one is like really awkward and not like, it's not for humor either. It's actually for Robert Dias, yeah. and it seems like maybe one person has seen the Red House commercial was like, "What about this?" And everyone else was like. That'll be nice. People like gays, um, and just went ahead with it and didn't. I don't know. I don't understand the idea. <laughs> I yeah. I don't, I, I don't. I guess they don't have a lot of gay customers, and they want to have gay customers. But once again, whenever we're talking about baffling ads, you have to admit that we're fucking talking about a baffling ad about a company we wouldn't otherwise be talking about. So they, they've won and we've lost. We always lose. We always lose. This, People's this exhibit should really be the name instead of people exhibit. It should be called "We Always Lose." Then you have sort of "We Always Lose." <laughs> Here uh, it is. So yeah, it's yeah. not offensive. It's just baffling, which makes it offensive. So for um, uh, additional sort of mini game to gamify this ad, uh, watch it without sound and try to guess who is who. Oh yeah. Yeah, to so try to guess who is straight, uh, gay, or bisexual. Um, yeah. And uh, then turn the sound on and see if you guessed it correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us how many points you can. You got. can kind of meta game that, you know, because if you're going to make this commercial, I'm just going to spoil the first one. You're not going to make the first person straight, are you? Because you'd be like, oh, what's going on? Right? No, wait, 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 wait. You're, you, what are you talking about? The first person is gay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying but he, in this he doesn't commercial, look you... like. No, the second one who is straight looks gay and he's actually straight. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. But uh, what I'm saying is, you know, you can meta game the person designing this commercial saying, if I want to make a commercial of this ah. idea, the very first person I put on the screen will have to say, hello, right. I'm a gay man. Or so something. you're analyzing. Because if you have 
Yeah, yeah, if you have yeah, the first okay. person come on and say, hello, I'm straight, you're like, whoa, is this some kind of fundy commercial? You're right. Where it's like no, Christian can't, can't fundamental have, furniture. You can't have that. You should, you should be like, I, I am a racial, ethnic, cultural, and sexual minority. Please come to our shop. Yes. Yeah. Then, then, then. No, 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 like, uh, no, nobody saying uh, we actually are, like, uh, disabled accessible yeah. in the shop. Presumably no. they're not. Oh, also, all of these people are white, by the way. So I guess they were going for a kind of non-intersectional um, equality thing. Or maybe only white people work at Robert Dice. Or Coincidentally. Shop. If you are not white, have you ever shopped at Robert Dice? Please uh, tell us in the comments. Yes. Uh, this is for science. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have been, <laughs> I've never been to the shop. I, 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 I may been, have I, been to the shop. I yeah. don't know because it's so indistinct. Yeah. It's... Uh, that's why it's so weird that they have this advert. It's it's like a shop you never heard of. You can go and be like, we're going to save the fucking world and the gays. They, they win, we lose. That, that's my conclusion here. Yeah, I think so. Every time. So which which leads us only with one one section of the show remaining. Um, Shut up, Perna. <laughs> Shall I ban him? Um, <laughs> so I'm talking to me about Windows 10. So we should just with only one uh, seg segment of the show, which is my the favorite shittest... segment. Yeah, also my favorite segment, the shittest title of the week. Uh, so we have fifteen today. Ooh. Yeah, um, and most of them aren't really bad. They're just kind of like they're just disappointing. I'm not angry at them. I'm not. I don't hate them. It's just like ah. <laughs> uh... Should I inhale a lot so that I can sigh a lot? Yeah, I think so. I think keep just start inhaling. So. Well, first thirteen out of those are just not. They're they're all same in the same way disappointing. They're none of them are like. It's, it's this is not a list of, like in in diminishing order or something like that. They're all kind of same way mediocre types. So I guess we'll be going through them somewhat rapidly. Though. Yeah, I I I think so. I think so. So this is all, all the stuff that came out last week since the last show, and we start with the Gabe Newell simulator. Oh wait. That's the name of it. That's the name of the. That's the name of the game. Oh, I um, thought that was like your kind of funny intro to no, something, no, and it was no. alluding to the fact that the guy kind of looked and acted <laughs> a bit like Gabe, or no, it's it, just called Gabe Newell. Yeah, you right? play as Gabe. It's a tiny FPS that you, I believe you can finish in like an hour. Do you not release Half Life Three? Oh, yeah. he's wearing Gordon's suit. Yeah, so you can is that you have a choice in the end of the game. I believe there's two endings. Either you release Half Life Three or you don't release Half Life Three. Well done, Ed. Very uh, good in investigative journalism <laughs> um, on your part. You should get the uh, the Circle Jerk Award, really. Um, Circle Jerk Award from President. <laughs> yeah, from the President of Circles. Um, yes. Yeah, the Geometry Award. Um, so, it, 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 obvious stuff. You know, don't use Word Simulator in your name. Also, just 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 stop about Gabe Newell. It's not funny anymore. It, this was not funny to begin with. Yeah. It isn't funny now, and it's not going to get, become funny later on through nostalgia or some hipsterism or something like that. It's just, no. It was never a good joke. It, it's trash. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. It is trash, but you can buy it for cheap. And ow, I've switched to a different scene. Um, and um, it's it's it has a I think approval rating of about forty five. So there, um, buy it. You're great. Right, so all this. the kind of people who like this joke voted for it, and everybody hmm. else didn't. Yeah, exactly. So. Also, but since the game is so short, you can actually finish it and then refund yourself. Perfect. Um, so it uh, is actually that's quite. Um, so it is quite um, postmodern in that way as well. It's, yeah, it's very yeah. self-referential. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> this exactly. is about the steam the mechanics of steam. Yeah, exactly. So the next one is called Star Crusade CCG, uh, standing for you know. So it's collectible card game. Yeah, collectible card game. Um, I at least appreciate that they put CCG in the title because yeah. it told me something about the game, unlike everything else. This is the only. This is not the only one today, this week, that is actually very, very descriptive. Um, what it doesn't tell you, and apparently, according to all the reviews, and it has, a, I think, a lower approval rating than the Gabe Newell simulator, um, is that it's a direct, absolutely direct reskin of Hearthstone. Like, oh. It doesn't even do anything else but change the the what it looks like. So it's like the same mechanics entirely. Same mechanics, and even the cards are very similar. The names are different. Oh. But it's is hard that not like illegal? That would be illegal, I think, if if uh, Blizzard ever you know goes. Isn't around that logo to... really familiar? Yeah, because it looks like Star Citizen. Oh wait, yeah, no, oh, this is Cloneware, like actual. Cloneware. This is Cloneware. Yeah, that's right. That's that. Those are the words in most of the reviews. Oh. So the title itself, I mean, 
bad, yeah. Not terrible, yeah. but pretty bad. I, I would have... I swear Star Crusade exists. Like, it sounds like something real. Yeah, it does. It does sound like something that you played in, you know, 1986. And... It's just one of those permutations that fell through the cracks and was <laughs> never actually made. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, there's one of the reviews are pretty good. They were, like, describing, the, you know, the levels of imitation and then the, the, the last level of hell was, like, this game. It's pretty good. <laughs> Someone went, like, in a pretty... In a, in a, in a quite um, detailed description. The next cool. one is called Waves Squared. Didn't now, we have a squared last week? I think we had cubed or something. I thought we had squared something recently, but okay. So I think they this is really a crime in, in titles because they missed out on a great title that could have been Waves Times Waves. And that, that, that would have at least sounded better than Waves Squared because that's just like, you, I guess you are a nerd and yeah, that's fine and your game may be good, but like you have a square sign in the game and that's kind of sad and how about the product of waves and waves because oh. maybe your your company could be called waves and waves and we the went, first game yeah. could be called the product of waves and waves and then you, you kind of make people believe that your last name is waves and your partner's <laughs> last name is waves as well because you're like waves and sun <laughs> <laughs> and the sun like you know because like s-u-n because there's like it's a space game. anyway um next one is called pay to win colon the tricks exposed so this is apparently edutainment almost game about pay to win. <laughs> is this like one of those things where the magician tells you how he did the tricks, but a video game? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So most <laughs> magicians cool. hate this. Um, still <laughs> a terrible, a trick. still a terrible title. Um, apparently, games also pretty terrible, except for like honest. So if you're most again, what the gist I got of, out of the reviews is that if you are not familiar with video games with video games at all and you never played pay to win games then this is pretty good for you you should probably do this otherwise so why it's release boring. it on steam i don't know i think this should be a free to play to be honest game and then the, that would make sense yeah. and it'd be a bit ironic but yeah pay yeah. to win colin the tricks exposed is, is mm -hmm. one of our um shittest titles of the week the yeah. next one and the final level it's uh <laughs> the final trick is to make a game criticizing the very tricks Oh, the, the criticism of tricks. The tricks it, exposed. The tricks, no, the, the tricks thanks, call and exposed. The the credits. <laughs> you, you're credited. And thank you, you sucker. <laughs> the next one is, um, again, it's not really terrible, even though it has the word project in it, but it's just like... <laughs> project. Yeah, so this is called Project Pulsation. So, is this Japanese? It isn't, I think. So is this a project that pulsates, or is, is it, it projecting? Is it projecting pulsation, <laughs> or is it a project called pulsation? It's un it's unclear. I think from this name. Yeah. Yeah. A colon would uh, would clear this right up. Maybe project colon pulsation. Exclamation mark question mark full stop. Four. Yeah. Four. Or four with words, like with letters, not with... Yeah, letters, yeah, yeah, and there are no previous games. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like with Democracy 3. <laughs> so ne next one is, is kind of... We, we're getting into the hardcore um, video game domain here. This is called Stories of Betham, which sounds like a village in England, um, colon <laughs> yeah. Full Moon. And it's, it's the full moon that kills me. Because... <laughs> For fuck's sake, I mean, we've I think been... the graphics. But, oh, sure, but we've been aware of, like, existence of Full Moon for decades, for centuries now, and, like, does it still, like, worry anybody? It's it's like saying, you know, stories of Batham, Oxygen, you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Oxygen didn't mythologically create wolves. <laughs> it didn't, neither did Full Moons, it's just bullshit. That's... Yeah, mythologically it did. Yeah, but again, it's one of the things that's, like, been done so many times, it's like... The oh, titles, yeah. the credits, the movie, the the show, the cinema, the pay the money now, the game. It's, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit like that. Um, again, it's not like it's not that's not the worst thing you ever heard of. It it doesn't induce vomit, but yeah. it, it's... it looks graphically a bit like Professor Layton, I guess. Yeah, 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 something something like that. Next one's kind of similar in that sense. So it has the word undercover, it has uh. the word missions, and it has uh. the word operation in it. it Wait, also, does it have any words that define it from anything else? It has Kursk and K141, which is, I, I believe, a name of a submarine. 
Um, it also has a um, very modern looking lady uh, wearing a ga gas mask in the submarine for some reason. I don't, I don't often see people with the gas mask in the submarine in my experience. And, you know, maybe I'll just... Have, maybe have it a... could be like a diesel sub where the, the, the fumes like bit got broken. broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's what it is. But yeah, this is Undercover Missions colon Operation Curse K141. Um, you know. Oh, wow, that really rolls off the yeah, that's, that's really, that's, yeah, it's Yeah, it's just... It's trickles <laughs> down the spinster. Um, <laughs> next one is also very video games, and whenever you use the word dragon in your game, it better be fucking amazing. Wow. Otherwise... It better be related to China. Yeah, or... Yeah, or it just... just it has to be like above 99% approval rating on, on Steam and be fucking the best game ever. <laughs> Dragons quake with that image, you know? That's, that's pretty good. Um, I like the lighting as well. It appears to be soft lit from the, from the top, but there's an orange flame coming out of the mouth of this crayon drawing. Crayon. A soft lit with like a, a, a white light. This is um, a crayon dragon that uh, it breathes crayons. Duh, nerd, get wrecked. Next game is is again the most generic I probably that I've seen last week is called Gem Wars. Colon. What's okay, Ed? Don't look at it. What's gonna be the next word after wars if there's a colon? Gem Wars. Wait, Jam is in. Oh, Gem Wars. G E M. Ah, you, sorry, you... I saw it. I saw it. Oh no! Oh no! Attack of the amazing. <laughs> of, of the, the giblets. giblets. Yeah. Well, at least giblets. Is yeah, what you got goes, wars yeah. and wars and attacks separated by colon. I think you're done. Yeah, you're done. This is just delete, log out, delete account. This is this is it. This is you. You've reached the end of your journey, or in video game industry, you're done. There's nowhere else to go. That's that's the last thing you release. Kojima, just before he dies, he's gonna release a game that has war before the colon and attack after it. Ah. <sighs> War gear attack. War gear attack, exactly. Next one is actually very, again, very. It looks like an interesting game, actually, but it has a very video game title. Avaris 2 colon, The Return of the Empress. And my question here is how many fucking times can a royalty return in a video game? Like, how many times can you just leave and come back and it's a video <laughs> game? For fuck's sake, can someone either remain or return as not as a royalty? The, as a the prodigal um, <laughs> monarch. That's what we should make. Yeah, the Prodigal Monarch. The game about <laughs> shitting as a king. <laughs> this, Why is, not? this is a royal toilet. Uh, microtransactions to make it prettier. Um, here's a little... Uh, the, uh, the, the circumference of the toilet changes depending on your asshole. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're right, Perna. This is w just war. Wandering to rule them all. <laughs> Wars colon attack is the best video game ever. You know, game game of the year every year. Next one is again is very confusing, and I guess it kind of makes some sense if you look at the screenshots and then think about it. It's called the Ables, colon three point high. Uh, at first, I thought it was about getting high. Obviously, is it a school, high school? Yeah, it turns out it's a school, and mm -hmm. you do platforming around something, and I guess you're pretty able um, since you can jump around a lot. So the Ables colon three point high again, not something that is like just a breach of all the laws, but it's just like uh, it really yeah. looks like the kind of thing that would make sense when you play it. Maybe it's just confusing. It's not like yeah, exactly. yeah, like you said, it's not it's just confusing. generic. It's just confusing, and it's probably it will be revealed. But you can, by the way, you can't do that with games. You can't name them in a confusing way that will make you want to play them because like reviewers and YouTube exists. So. You that just won't work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just have a name that's memorable. This isn't memorable either, by the way. <laughs> no, I already forgot. Well, gonna... Maybe the word Ables <laughs> is, but like, colon? Yeah, colon yeah, is yeah. pretty memorable, though, because every game has it, so you remember all of them. Yeah. Yeah. The genre, I can't forget games. Exactly. Attack so... of the memory. <laughs> Attack of the memory of mine. Um, <laughs> so next one is very topical, because it's about piracy in Somalia. Uh, this one's called. Oh, well, right, like real piracy. <laughs> yeah. Gulf of Aden. This is where it's the piracy is happening, by the way. Um, didn't didn't do a colon, did a dash, so they're quite mm. hipster about it. Gulf of Aden dash Task Force Somalia. Is that just like a code name, or is it actually in Somalia, then? It's a code name for I'm having sex with your mother. Ha 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 ha. 
<laughs> not actually really because I'm a virgin. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a very strange thing to call any anything, and it also happens. This whole action happens sort of on a, on an interactive map on a desk. Mm. Yeah. So it sounds like some kind of game you play on your lunch break with your nerd friends. Yeah, sort of, but like. The ones it's without Mario. any com any taste at all. Like if they had some taste, they'd probably could play like um, Warhammer 40k or something. This yeah. is what people call poverty games. Oh yeah, the the, the poor man, the poor man's desktop stuff with Simulator. ships. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we have three left. Um, next one is apparently a good game according to the reviews, which is great. I'm I'm happy that it was released, but. It has two exclamation marks in the title, and I think that's in itself is a crime. So this is called O! Oh! Exclamation mark. RPG! Exclamation mark, which is meant to be funny, and it's not. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's trying to be cute. Yeah, it's not funny, actually. I don't think. Yeah. Did, were, you, did you, were you amused by this, Ed? I would have been more amused if O was lowercase. Uh, so, and I didn't think I could be less amused by the idea of lowercase oh exclamation mark space capital RPG exclamation mark, but I am. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> nevertheless, I've been proven wrong once again. <laughs> Life, the, uh, right? In, in, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the last two, Make it up. Um, so the runner-up and the winner, I they were pr pretty. I, I was thinking, you know, which one to be the, the, the first place for this week's The Shittest Title. Uh, I still went the way I went, but this is pretty good. This is the runner-up. It's, it's damn fucking... It was, it's out there. It's, it's one of those things that we enjoy so much. This is called Metal War Online. Right? Just soak that in. Metal War Online, colon, duh, obviously, retribution. Right? If this isn't a video game, what is it? Like, it's, it clearly <laughs> speaks of itself. as It says, I am a shitty video game. Come play me, gamer. I feel, I feel like you filthy gamer. Yeah. I feel like what would happen is uh, this person's office, they don't have one, but let's say they had an office. Uh, in walks a uh, Konami lawyer with a briefcase, and they don't frowns, and they're like, I'm going to sue you for... A reason, and they come in. They're like, <laughs> "You are being sued because of your game, Metal War <laughs> Online Retribution, because it resembles." And it's it's camouflage. It's such a generic game title that he forgets where he is, why he's there, his wife, his his family, and he kind of is like, "What is this?" And the guy's like, "Oh, it's a briefcase." And he's like. Okay, and he just pretends he understands what the guy's saying because he still retains the concept of like embarrassment and shame, and he just stumbles <laughs> out into the hallway and he's like, "What did I just? Where am I? What? Are, what is the purpose of my life?" And he just sees on a piece of paper. He opens his briefcase and it's like obviously very scary to him because he has no idea what's in there. It could be a gun, it could be anything, and he just sees a, a an A4 piece of paper that says. Metal War Online <laughs> Retribution, and he's just like, and there's an address, and he goes out and he tries to find this place, and it's like a whole plot, and uh, that's what happens to this man. It, it, yeah, the men who found the Metal War Online colon Retribution, the movie, the book, the the, the short story <laughs> that inspired it. <clears throat> so you're probably thinking like, what could be better than this, right? Yeah, well, could. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it has a colon, it has metal, it has war, it has online, it has retribution in it. What, what, what could title could want? possibly be better than this? And I think the title can the only title that can be better than, than one with the colon is the one that has a colon and a dash in it. Um, and for this week, that is something that we probably all of us have heard about. This is Ghost in a Shell. In uh, itself, a good title. Decent. It's a yeah. bit romantic, but it's okay. Yeah. Ghost in a Shell colon gets worse. Standalone complex. It it was a that's from sequel. the TV show. Yeah, it's on yeah. a TV show. That's okay. That's all right. Whatever. Kind of maybe it it gets worse, but it's fine. And then it has a, plot reasons for being that. Yeah, and there's a dash after that. Um, there is no justification for that dash. And after dash, it says first assault online. This seems like the kind of thing that needs to have a phone number that you can call if you feel bad afterwards. First assault online. Yeah. So. Let's, let's just count the words, shall we? So, what? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten words. 
In a total. Uh, excuse me, I think that a colon is its own word and a dash is three words. Twelve so... words then. Either twelve <laughs> words, depending how you count it, or ten words plus two punctuation signs later. Yeah. You pay three three pounds seventy five, and you're not you're not you don't even know what you're getting because it's an early access. Uh, apparently, I haven't actually. I still haven't. Simon's listened. been fucking around with this, I think, and he's like, "This is disappointing." At least. He said it was disappointing musically. It had inappropriate dubstep. That's yeah, that's what I heard it. So I heard that he had inappropriate dubstep. But um, get sack foul, says Miguel. <laughs> get sack. I remember get sack at the time. I was like, I really hope nobody notices I'm watching an anime that could be abbreviated to get sack. <laughs> uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's like if someone asks you, "What are you playing?" I'd be like, "I'm playing Ghost in the Shell: Standalone Complex for Assault as one." Yeah. What are you playing? Oh no, I'm also playing Ghost in the Shell Send Along Complex for a little line. If if it was a good game and, and it was something we played and you know it was the kind of thing where I'd I'd open a, a Steam window with you and you'd be like, Ah, you fancy playing? I would say, You wanna slap the git sack? <laughs> that's what I'd say. That's what that's what Martin Crowley would say as well. <laughs> oh. That's what he does, he slaps the git sack usually. He is a git sack. He is a git sack and slaps himself to to get a bit of fail. <laughs> some foul <laughs> to get some foul he you gotta have his... the foul before you can have the sow yeah be- before you know just before he sla- slaps his own git sack <laughs> what are we talking about git sack star are you following uh, I wish there was a good ghost in the shell game cause it's like perfect universe for like good games but there's never gonna be you one. know every time they would just make like a third person action fuck off st- pick up your health <sighs> Stuff. Don't do that. You know, there actually has been a really good game that kind of is goes in the shell. I keep saying it, and it's Neo Tokyo. It's got everything pretty much. It's just kind of an off-brand thing so that they don't get shut down. I think the most but, most problem with the, the biggest problem is that no one plays it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing. It's that no one plays it. It's in original Source Engine, so it's quite old. Community yeah. small, but all the concepts were really cool. The gunplay felt really nice. It was really punishing, and you had to use like your like heat vision or your motion vision or like this that and the other it could it could use a bit more maybe even more tech stuff yeah. it'd be great if like the kind of budget and tech kind of shit from like the recent card and titanfall was given to somebody who had like the creative aesthetic mind of like ghost and shell's gonna be this it's gonna be kind of brutal and, and realistic and then just made it and then deployed it in some kind of killing floor way. Yeah, <laughs> that, that'd be perfect. Imagine if there was like a mech sort of type thing, which you know, because Ghost Cell kind of has some 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 mechs or at least yeah. tanks appearing in there that are sort of like AI oriented. That was a simulation. Imagine what a great game that would be. Which never yeah. never they never made it. They all claimed it was a simulation or whatever, but it never was. It was just like you're walking and you're a mech instead of a character. Ha ha lol. Play us. Uh, imagine if it was like an actual robot that you had to maintain, like, you know, like an oh. ace three level of damage. Oh, that'd be cool. Or more, but, even. Yeah, or more. Or by, by a mech. That would be pretty cool. There have been some, like, mech games where they're really detailed, but they're still not, like, simulation. Yeah, exactly. I that'd think be the, cool. the hard bit there is that in real life, no one would actually make a mech. Yeah, because they're <laughs> actually not, like, tactically of value. No, because they're giant fucking objects that are easy to hit. Yeah, that's why tanks kind of have a maximum size. Like, you could make a vehicle bigger than that. I mean, boats exist, but, like, boats make sense in water. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the re- like, the original tanks were built as if they were boats, and they failed horribly. Yeah. Um, this is the thing. This is why I want my, as I've said many times before, my future um, warfare game, which involves drones and proper counter-intel, and, and the only use of humans is what only humans can then still do. Like, a, a pilot right now is irrelevant. <laughs> like, yeah, fucking. That's yeah. They're just making... It's reproduction. Just making fucking. Yeah. <laughs> making For its seconds. sake, yeah. And then there's uh, just AI handles the war. Yeah. 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 Some kind of AI Against handled other war. AI. The, the last human... I want to play a game that's the last war which involves kind of humans in a significant way. That's so a I want name. like a big theme of it to be the insecurity of humans being obsolete, but not like current one where they're standing opposite a android that looks like a human. He says, I feel too. I don't want that shit. <laughs> I, I, I want where Steven the Spielberg world... future. Yeah, fuck Steven Spielberg and his future and his past. 
and is present. Uh, I just want the kind of world where the robots are so strange that they are beyond, like, really understanding for humans who feel and live as obsolete relics. Yeah, absolutely. Which, Last yeah, War is a great name. Last War. It's, yeah. it's so it went slightly in that direction. I still don't think you'll enjoy it, but it does do a couple of things, like, really cool... So you may even, you, I think uh, the best uh, outcome I can hope is that you will appreciate the same aspects that I appreciate. From what, what went in that way, you said? Um, the kind of making humans obsolete. No, what, you said something went in... Soma. Oh, Soma, okay. Yeah. We, I, I started playing it with Lena, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we, we got to the part where you were actually uh, past the, you know, you were in the Wonderland. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we're just kind of getting scared of sounds and... And electricity and, and stuff like that, but yeah, it, so far it's been quite quite good. I, I don't feel like oh. appalled by it at all. Oh, I, I, was, I, I never know, but like some plots, I think, uh, like some some threads of the plot are kind of obvious and uh, AI sci-fi tropey. Yeah. But it does go to some interesting places. I, I just that's where it's a bit grave for me. Where I think, oh, Andrew will be like, oh, this is tropey, or like, I just like sci-fi, yeah. and then this is interesting. So. It's kind of like a recommendation with caveats for that reason. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, so far I'm interested, so I'll, I'll report back as you know as we play more a bit more of it. Cool, cool stuff. Anything you wanted to add to today's show before we round this up? No, nah, everybody, fuck off. We're gonna play Battle Royale now. Oh, everybody, fuck off, please. Um, this. Thank you though for watching. Uh, we're gonna be returning in 2016, which is in the, the future. future. With full yeah. of drones and depression, um, and relic <laughs> humans like ourselves getting drunk on relic beer, uh, and hopefully relic wine because that shit's really good. Um, and relic uh, goon, exactly relic goon, uh, relic bad wine. Um, to help us get it, please support us on Patreon. Uh, click the like button, share this on LinkedIn uh, with your <laughs> professional circles uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, and uh, we'll see you in 2016. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Bye, Happy New Year, etc. Good. We did it. Good, solid show.